Hi everybody, welcome to Nepal. Um, my name is Danielle Knupo and I'm here representing the food security team. These are the members of our core FTF team here. Um, so just, I've got five minutes so I'm going to try to keep it quick, but um, Nepal faces several development challenges, um, but they are well <coughs> on their way to reaching um, three Millennium Development Goals. Um, so these challenges also face or serve as good opportunities for Nepal. Um, just wanted to highlight that 66% of the labor force is in agriculture, although that uh, number is decreasing. Um, right now, a lot of um, m a lot of people out migrate to look for uh, different sources of income in other places, but people are starting to come back when they see that there's actually um, ways to make a lot of money in agriculture here in Nepal. Um, if you look at stunting and wasting, Nepal is in line with a lot of um, African countries. Um, however, the status is improving here. And, but if you look at several different areas in Nepal, for example, the hills and the mountains, some of the statistics are a little bit worse off there. So a lot of our efforts are focused in the hills and mountains area. When you look at the agricultural context, um, challenges include access to high quality inputs, uh, weak ag extension in private sector, and in general, weak linkages in the agriculture sector. Um, so these are areas where improvements can be made. If you look at Nepal compared to several other, other countries, um, you'll notice low fertilizer use, um, lower use in improved seeds, lower irrigation and productivity. So the uh, FTF multi-year strategy in Nepal was developed um, in 2011. And through the strategy, we're working to, uh, to lift people out of poverty and to improve nu nutritional status. And we're doing this through interventions in, in increasing agricultural productivity and income, increasing um, markets and trade, and then also in interventions in nutrition. We're planning to reach 160,000 households, which is about a million beneficiaries. And we're focusing on high value vegetables and also in a rice, maize, lentil, and livestock farming system. Um, we're combining agriculture with nutrition and hygiene interventions. And we're taking a whole of government approach and also helping to build the capacity here within Nepal and ensuring a sustainable private sector. Um, we've had several successful projects in the past and we're replicating those projects. The reason for choosing high value vegetables is uh, because there's a high impact for uh, for incomes and also for nutrition. There's local demand that's increasing for vegetables and also there's demand within the region for these vegetables. <clears throat> the reason for maize, rice, and lentils is because uh, rice and maize are the number one and number two staple crops. A lot of farmers are growing rice and maize here in Nepal. And these system, these lentils and rice and maize really um, help the poorest farmers. When you look at Nepal, you see um, three different zones, the mountains, hills, and Terai. And um, our efforts are focused in the Terai and in the hills. And this map here shows the different districts. Right now we're in 20, di 20 districts. So we have three major components. Component A is improved agricultural productivity. And we're supporting commercially driven agricultural transformation. Component B is improved nutrition and hygiene education and service delivery. And we're using a, uh, a model of a, a project currently located here in Nepal called the Suhara Project. And that's working with uh, the poorest households, with thousand-day mothers, teaching them nutrition, um, 
education and behavior change messaging. And component C is a entrepreneurial and literacy and numer numeracy program. <coughs> and we've done programs such as these in the past and, and it works with the most vulnerable households, a lot of times with uh, um, disadvantaged castes and with uh, women. And we found that building these skills really um, helps these people to get involved with agricultural projects. We also have a, um, <coughs> a new monitoring and evaluation component to monitor and evaluate all of our FCF programs. This is a list of the eight different projects that we're funding through the USA Nepal mission. Um, I'm not going to go through each of these but you'll see that the first four focus on ag productivity. We also have a policy, agricultural policy project, business literacy, and we support uh, the Peace Corps volunteers here in Nepal who recently came back to, to Nepal about two years ago. This is sort of a diagram of how all of our projects uh, fit into each other. Our main project is the Kisan project. Um, so coordination is a very important part of what we do and we coordinate with the government at the national level, at the district levels, and our strategy fits in with the government's agricultural development strategy and, and also the nutrition, nutrition strategies. Um, we also coordinate closely with development partners, local organizations, and with private sector. Okay, um, this just shows how we are collaborating with the different initiatives like the Global Health Ini Initiative and also the Climate Change Initiative. And we work through economic growth, disaster risk and reduction, and also democracy and governance. And lastly, um, we work through other different agencies uh, like the Department of State, Peace Corps, Food for Peace, USDA. So we're really focused on collaborating with a lot of different uh, agencies and initiatives which help leverage our funds. Thank you. To learn more, please visit agrilinks.org and feedthefuture.gov. And to learn more about this mission's activities, please visit www.usaid.gov Nepal.